looks like an innocent young child being gassed with cyanide and species, but she is no ordinary human, and that is why they are trying to kill her. As the movie opens, we learn that mankind received radio signals from outer space, including the blueprint for a DNA molecule that could be combined with our own human DNA. Government scientists experiment with a new combination, and the result is a frightening creature that, although it can look like a little girl, can also look like a frightening alien. Ben Kingsley plays the scientist in charge of the program, and here he briefs his team, which leads the search for the alien after she, or it, escapes. We decided to make it female so that it would be more docile and controllable. More docile and controllable, huh? Well, I guess you guys don't get out much. To find out more about this species, the government tries to incubate some of the pure alien DNA without crossing it with human genes. The results are terrifying as two workers get trapped in a sealed room with the second alien. Funny, but this doesn't look like the kind of creature that could send information about DNA through outer space. Disconnect the gas line in the isolation box. Use it as a flamethrower. Meanwhile, the alien hybrid grows very quickly. In fact, in no time at all, that little girl blossoms into a woman, played here by Natasha Henstridge, who is driven by a need for reproduction. I want a baby. What? Excuse me? Let's go around the side. Species is a very bad movie, and one of the ways you know that is that in a science fiction movie with any brains, the alien doesn't spend most of her time taking off her bra. The team that chases the monster is an ungainly unit, including a professional killer, played by Michael Madsen, and a psychic, played by Forrest Whitaker. By the end of the movie, they're all slogging around in a sewer with the monster. In fact, the movie is just like the alien. It starts out looking good and ends up by getting its kicks by having things jump at us off of the screen. Well, I enjoyed the picture, Roger. You did? I sure did. I enjoyed Natasha Hensridge yeah. uh, taking I'm off sure her bra. Did, yes. Absolutely, okay. I did. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I go to the movies. And I also go for some thrills. And I thought that this team, uh, all different support troops with all their different specialties, including uh, Forrest Whitaker, who has the empathy, and the other guys who have the science and all that, I think they were a great. And team. Michael Madsen, who's got his gun, and he's going to shoot the alien and when all he sees of, it. I yeah. thought it was a lot of fun, except uh -huh. at the end, it does run us around in a, a mosh, in a, in a water pit. Yeah. Uh, and that, to me, was kind of boring. But up until that point, does I thought it this ever, was high energy and a lot of fun. Has it ever occurred to you that a movie like this could occasionally be made with a little intelligence? And so a, a creature that's capable of sending messages yeah. across light years of space might not turn into a giant exploding... Uh, sponge when it gets to Earth. Hey, How Roger, that you know, well, the, you know, they made a good one. Close Encounters of the Third Kind is that yeah, kind of... It's a lot okay. better movie, yeah. Uh, yes, oh, yes it is, but this is and a lot of what fun. what this creature does, it basically turns into something that jumps at you from behind things well, in order to give manufactured been, thrills. They've been doing it for 80 years in the movie. Sometimes it's done I well, and this, one, this one they did very well. A long time ago. Okay, coming up next...